Good. It's nice to have so much musical talent in the church. Yes. Very much enjoyed that. And I wrote everything down so Susan will know what everything is and we can put it in the videos. She's not here today because, as Kyla said, there was a surgery, but I'm not so sure it was what Kyla was saying. I think it's a heart cath, a stent that's going in today. Um, <laughs> anyhow, I, uh, I guess a lot of people are on vacation today, huh? Maybe they were worried about the weather. Um, you know, I don't, I, I suppose many of you, because I've missed that little, uh, little thing we had with Charles Hoggenbrooks, the breaking in of the new year. That was really wonderful. That was, that was a, a real special time. And uh, one of the people that came to that told me personally that, um, I need to be, that they were 74 years old, and I'm not going to give this person away, but that they were 74 years old, and that I looked older than them. Uh -oh. <laughs> so that I needed to either grease and formula this beer or get rid of it. <laughs> so um, I told my wife that, and she laughed. And she said, it's probably a good thing you're not married to that individual. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> But uh, this little talk today is, um, I, I labeled this 2020 vision. <clears throat> First Chronicles 2020, it, it, it talks about getting up there early in the morning, right? Seeking the Lord's face. Isn't that what it's all about? Yes. We need to get our marching orders, don't we? Wait a second. Okay, thank you. Second Chronicles 2020. Good job, Kyle. I'm glad you're paying attention, sweetheart. So, um, anyways, it, you know, if we if we continually do what we've always done, we'll only get what we've always got. So it's time for some new vision, don't you think? It's time to allow the Lord to lead, and instead of us trying to make our own decisions and ending up having to put it in reverse and back up. Because that's not always fun, is it? Um, let's turn to Matthew 6, 33. <coughs> Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Do you believe that's true? Amen. So what does Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 say? Let's go there. That's one I'm sure most of y'all have memorized. I'll begin in verse 5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not on thine own understanding. <clears throat> Isn't that part of getting what we've always got? Doing what we've always done? Leaning on our understanding? So there's more to it than just seeking the Lord. There, there has to be a laying down of something. You see? We, we have to give Him our will. Yeah. So we seek the Lord, and in verse 6 it says, And always acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. All of Adam's sin, brothers and sisters, has been imputed to all of his posterity. That's you and I. We got it, you know, um, children... <laughs> I found children are not born humble. That's not the way children are born. We all have Adam's sin. Let's turn to Romans. Romans chapter 5. Verse 
very nice book. I would call Paul a prophet with you. Amen. We do good to listen to the prophets we heard, right? Second Chronicles 20, 20. So let's go right in uh, chapter 5 and verse 20. Let's start there. Moreover, the law entered that the offenses might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Do you see there? One or the other is going to be in control, isn't it? That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Amen. So that's what we want, right? We want to be led and be righteous, right? We want the, we want the throne of grace, right? So there needs to be there needs to be a death, correct? Yeah. So if we go down into chapter six, it says in verse one, "What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound?" Hmm. I don't think so. That's not the answer, is it? Yeah. God forbid. In verse two, it says, "How shall we?" that are dead to sin, live any longer therein. How do we get the victory? How does the victory come to us? Is it, is it, is it us wrestling? Or is it us surrendering? Amen. As we surrender our will to God, He is allowed to do the work that he wants to perform, right? Yeah. And if we're giving him our will, then we're in accordance, we're walking with him, right? We want to do his will. It becomes our will. When you really love somebody, isn't it, isn't it, don't, don't, doesn't it make you happy to make them happy? Isn't that what love is all about? Who loves you more than Jesus? Not Nobody. None of us even has the capacity to love at the level that Jesus loves. Mm -hmm. He is the author and finisher of our faith. I think that, I'm hoping and praying that this is the worst sermon you guys hear all year long. Okay? I really am. I want to see us continue to grow and get better and better at seeking the Lord's face. And as Ricky said, I think the emphasis this year really needs to be on prayer. This church needs to be a prayed up, stuck together group of individuals. You know? And if we see our brother or sister suffering, we need to lift them up. We need to hold on to them. We need to help them. You know? Yeah. In this group, it's not like the world. In the world, they believe you get better by standing on somebody else. You should stand a little taller. But that's not the way it is here. This is a whole different place. You step through these doors, it's another world. You know, we're supposed to be ambassadors of Christ, right? That means we're representatives of what? Another world. We get too hung up on this, this world that we live in and all the problems that come along with it. It's so easy to get caught up in this stuff and get focused because, you know, we got to live in this world. We work in this world. There's friends that we have. There's people that we know. There's people we bump into that, that can be rascals, right? And um, it helps us build our character. It helps us grow. You know, there's a, there, there's a, there's a greater purpose in all this that the Lord is doing. He's he's, he's marching, mar uh, uh, carving out character in us, right? You know, you, you got to turn the heat up pretty high to get all the, the impurities out, you know? And, and do you know when all the impurities are out of silver? When you, when you can see your own reflection. That's what Jesus is looking for. His reflection in you. That's what the world is waiting for. 
You know, it, 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 there's so much talk about the gospel needs to go out to the whole world. Yes, I understand that. That's true. And, and the Bible says, Paul says that the gospel has went to the whole world. The world was turned upside down, right? The world's waiting for a demonstration. Not just a bunch of people talking. They want to see the gospel in you and in me. The Bible says what? How, how are God's people to be known? By the love that they have one to another. Right? How much do you love your enemy? Think about, think about the way Jesus loved when Judas came to him and betrayed him with a kiss. How do you think that would make you feel? Have you ever been betrayed by a friend? Only a friend can betray you. You know, because only a friend do you let in that close. You know, just a casual contact individual can't hurt you like somebody that you love, <clears throat> somebody that you care for. Am I right? <laughs> How would you take something like that? Would you lean on Jesus? Would you allow him to feel the feelings? You know, he wants to have his representatives. He needs skin. And that skin is you and I. That's what I think we fail to see as individuals. We get so caught up in our, here comes the rain, our little pity parties and all the things that happen in our lives, and we get, you know, it's in the, it's in the crucible of the fire that we're like, oh, poor me, poor me. If we could just take a moment and, and, and realize what's really happening, and we could look and see where Jesus is taking us, we could stop walking around in the desert for 40 years, you know? Are you tired of the merry-go-round? Are you tired of the same old, same old? Let's get some 2020 vision this year. Let's do it different. Let's open the doors wide. Let's lean upon Jesus Christ and allow this grace, this grace to rule and not sin anymore. Amen. You know, Jesus said in, in Matthew 121, well, what was it that was said? That, Jesus, that, that Mary was going to bear a child, right? And he would what? Save his people from their sins. It doesn't say save his people in their sins. It says save his people from their sins. Amen. Now, if God is saying that we can do it, how do people say that we can't? I don't want to listen to the world anymore. I want to listen to Jesus. Let's allow him to work in us. You know, and, and rightfully so, Jesus died for your sins and my sins, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't belong to us. They belong to Jesus. Right. He wants to take them. And if we allow him to take them, he can give us his righteousness. What a deal. How do you lose? Is there any better deal on this planet than that? I don't know of anything. Let us continue on verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? What does that mean, that we were baptized into his death? It means we died with him, yeah. right? Why was Jesus baptized? Did he need to be baptized? He told John what? That it was to fulfill all righteousness. Right? Jesus, I mean, everywhere you look in the Bible, I don't know how people can say that Jesus didn't have the same flesh that we have. I, I don't understand that thought process. Yes, Jesus never sinned. But he had taken on the same flesh that we have, the same flesh that his mother Mary had, and he took that he took that flesh to victory. He conquered sin, death, and the devil, and he buried that flesh, and he rose forevermore. Amen. 
So verse 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That life as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Do we believe that? Do we walk around? Do we talk? Do we treat other people like we really believe that? Like we have been born again. You see, I think the problem with a lot of people is they say, yeah, you know, I was born again in 1978. I remember such and such a time, blah, blah, blah. What is your experience today, brothers and sisters? All who shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what it says, right? But it doesn't mean that you call upon the name of the Lord one time and you can live life any way you want to, which is wrong, okay? And then expect to be with Christ. Amen. You have to be depending upon Him daily. Daily. We have to die. Does the Bible say yearly? No. It says daily, doesn't it? We have to die daily. That's the only way we can be in this grace is to be, to be dead. Verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall also be in the likeness of of his resurrection. Do you hear the promise? What a beautiful promise. Verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man, our old nature, is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Jesus conquered this for us, didn't he? He wants to give us this victory. All we got to do is say yes and thank you. Yes and thank you. For he that is dead is freed from the sin. Amen? Amen? Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we also, we shall also live with him. You want to live with him? I mean, he's saying right here that he, he's, he's he, he, this, these are promises here. That will keep us from sinning. 1, 2, 6, 7, 8. All these verses right here. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead. Dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died. He died unto sin once. But in that he liveth. He liveth unto God. He died for the condition. He took, he took Adam's sin. And took it to the grave. We still have this flesh. We still have this nature. But Jesus Christ gave us something in the new birth. He gave us grace. And that grace, the Bible says, much more abounds. But I'm not so sure how much we believe it. Because if we really believe it, then it ought to move us. We ought to fall in love with this justification that we have from Christ. We ought to actually, as Brother John said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these other things will be added unto us. How much time in 2019 have you sought Him first? I'm not asking for anything. I'm not asking for anybody to say anything. I'm the Holy Spirit to talk into your own heart. Unless the body, unless the body of is destroyed, we will serve sin. Unless the old man or nature is crucified, the body of sin is not destroyed. Let us turn to John 17. You know what John 17 is? Jesus Christ. That's right. That's the prayer. Y'all there? Yeah. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power 
over some flesh? All. All flesh. That he should give eternal life as to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know him, thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou hast given me to do. What part of this work is he finished at this point? He had the victory over sin, hasn't he? He's getting, he's getting ready to walk into Gethsemane, isn't he? He, he's, he's, uh, his face is set. He knows where he's going. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. You know, Jesus never had a beginning. <coughs> Some people want to say that he was born. Well, he put on flesh, okay? But Jesus wasn't born. Not in the respect that he, he, he always has been. There has never been a time where God was not without his word. Okay? Jesus Christ is the word of God. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou, had, thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. Did Jesus speak anything in on his own here? No. It's all coming from the Father, isn't mm -hmm. it? And why is that so? Because he is our pattern, you see? And he is not speaking of his own or of his own divine um, person. He's allowing the Father to do everything. That's the pattern. That's what he wants us to do. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep thou though, keep thou thy own name, and keep thou thy own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Isn't that what God's prayer is for us, that we be one? How do we become one if we have selfishness? How do, we, how do we become one if we're not focused upon Christ? We have to lay down the old man. And the old man doesn't die easy. He wants to be alive every new day. That's why we have to die daily. But we can have this victory. While I, in verse 12, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I, I have kept. And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Have you had joy? Would you like to have joy? How about joy in 2020? How about joy in the spirit? I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Has he sent you, brothers and sisters? Do you feel the call upon your heart to change things? To turn this thing over? To vindicate God? To do this work that needs to be done? You know, you, you can't just go make people do things they don't want to do. What we need to do is fall in love with Jesus. If you fall in love with Jesus, you, you can't help but do the right things. 
You can't help but walk the walk and talk the talk. Verse 19, and for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Isn't that you and I, brothers and sisters? Isn't this Jesus praying for us directly this day, right now, here in this church? Yeah. They, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Do you hear the one, the one, the one? I mean, right through this prayer, what is God seeking here? He's seeking that oneness, that oneness that was lost in the garden when Adam decided to go his own way, when he decided to disbelieve God. We need to believe God, even when he's saying things we don't want to hear. Okay? Because there are some things he says that we don't really like. Truth isn't always pretty. But we have to say yes and thank you and move forward into him. I in them and thou in me, verse 23, that they may be made perfect in one. Do you hear that perfect? What do you think perfect is? Pardon me? I still didn't hear you. Without sin. Without sin. Mature. Mature. Complete. Complete. Beautiful. I love what I'm hearing. And I say amen to all of it. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them. And thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. Is that a great and wonderful prayer? Amen. Jesus wants us to be with him. I don't care where it is, heaven or any place. If Jesus is there, that's where I want to be. That is where I want to be. If it's in the fiery furnace, then that's where we need to be. Because if Jesus is there, and you're, you're fireproof, you understand? You imagine what it must feel like to walk through fire and not be burned? To come the other side of that fire and your, your clothes don't even smell like smoke? Can you imagine that kind of communion to be with God in the crucible? You know, if he's calling us to die, then we die. If he's calling us to live, then we live. But let us follow Christ in 2020. Not seeking our own way. Not seeking hurt of anybody. Even some fellow that treats you just terribly wrong. Pray for him. You know? It, it's the grace that God gives me that breaks my heart. You know, when God says, I forgive you, I'm like, how can you forgive me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a, it just breaks my heart, this grace that God gives us. I am that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Ugh. Oh. Look at this, this relationship that God, the Father, and Jesus have together. Don't you want some of that? Don't you want to be right in that? O oh, righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Do you hear that? This is the Word of God speaking to God. This is His prayer to us right here today that we may be one, that we might have victory over sin, that we might become righteous as He is righteous. Like I said, what a deal. All we do is hand Him our filth and He takes it away and makes us righteous. And we walk with Him in a holiness. Think about that for a moment. He treats us as though we have never sinned. That is an amazing thought. Like you have always obeyed. Thank you, Ricky. When Jesus had spoken these words, I'm going into verse 18, I mean uh, chapter 18. 
When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kedron, where was a garden, into the which he entered and his disciples. And you know what garden this is, right? This is Gethsemane. His mind was fixed on finishing this work. And not only 